everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Chip Talks. It's another beautiful Friday morning here and we're coming to you from our less than secret bunker location right outside Ada America. So if you're on your way to Ada and you're somewhere between Pickett and Ada, you'll see us on Highway 19. Please stop in and say hi. Uh, see what we do, see what we're all about. We'd love to have you in here. Uh, we will serve you some good food. We'll talk to you about your health. We can examine you and do all kinds of fun stuff. So please come by and see us. And if you ever wanna come by and uh, watch us do uh, chip talks, then you're more than welcome to do that. We don't have any audience members here today other than Miss Cynthia Paul, but you're more than welcome to do that at any time. So today we're gonna talk about uh, the gut biome. And this is a super important topic. I'll just kind of give you some of my experiences with this. Uh, you know, eight years ago, 10 years ago, if you would have come to me and said, hey Chip, you have all this bacteria in your in your body. I would have thought, you're insane. You're absolutely insane. I don't have any bacteria in my body. Yeah, Chip, you have worms and things like that inside of you, little microscopic things. It's like, no, I wouldn't have, I just wouldn't have bought it. Um, but it turns out, wow, is that true? And oh my gosh, do they play a big role in health and disease? So we're gonna talk a little bit about the, about the gut biome and, and about kind of what uh, goes on in there and how it relates back to the endocannabinoid system too. So it's, you know, if you look at sort of, you know, we're a sophisticated vehicle, right? Or at least this physical presence that I have here is a sophisticated vehicle. Well, no one ever gave me an owner's manual on, on how to run this vehicle. So, you know, and again, it appears to all practical observations that everything that they tell us is wrong it's not shouldn't be in the dang owner's manual okay so i'm trying to help us build a better owner's manual for this thing so how does this thing work how does it really work what's the truth about it you know how can we manipulate it how can we manipulate it for health and how can we manipulate it you know for positivity rather than you know the way that this world seems to want to do and that's to corrupt it right to corrupt our temple isn't that interesting and godly and all that. So it's let's get back to what God wants. Let's bless our temple. Let's let's uh, rejoice and worship our temple. But let's understand how to do that better. And that's what I think God wants us to do. He doesn't want us to you know walk around in a corrupted and rotting body. He wants us to walk around in a beautiful, bright, shining body. Right. So and again, it doesn't matter how sick you are or how old you are. We can all get to that bright, shiny kind of new uh, body, if you will. And certainly all every cell inside of you will regenerate. I tell this story every day. So I'll tell this story to you guys. I've probably told it before, but every cell inside of us is always striving toward perfect health. Okay? Always striving toward perfect health. You're just a collection of cells. We're just a system of cells. So why aren't we striving toward perfect health? Because we should be. Most of us do this, right? Why? Well, that's what we study here. That's what I'm trying to tell you about. So there's a lot of reasons to the why, but most of the reasons are self-inflicted, are self-inflicted reasons. Um, you know, there's a lot, there is no magic pill, there is no magic bullet other than nature and the, you know, system of the, that God sort of built for us out here in nature. But that is our magic bullet, honestly. But it takes a tip to understand that. And we've got to kind of understand how that interfaces with us and how we can use nature and how we can kind of use it to help our health. But the biggest thing is just our behavior, okay? So there's so much stuff that you can help yourself with by just changing behavior. But, you know, no one's going to change behavior without education. And so that's what we're going to do is educate you a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about, about the gut microbiome. And again, you've got critters inside of you that are trying to help you. You've got critters inside of you that are trying to eat you, that are literally trying to destroy you, trying to tear you down and decompose you. So we're gonna talk about kind of both sides of that equation, but, but what you know flips the balance there and what should that balance look like? Uh, okay, so uh, this is sort of my first little graphic here. For those of you that are, that are listening at home, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk you through this graphic, but this is sort of a 
really complicated looking graphic on the gut microbiome and kind of also what other organ systems are influenced by, you know, like the gut brain axis, uh, the gut heart axis, the gut lung axis, the gut liver axis. So the gut touches all of these different organ systems, um, but just inside of the gut, again, there's between a thousand uh, or, you know, right around a thousand colonies of lactobacillus, strep, staph, and entero, I'm not going to try to pronounce some of these words, by the way, but introbacteria, let's just say, in the duodenum. Uh, there's, you know, a thousand colonies of the same stuff in the jejunum and ileum, well, you know, your uh, small intestine, you have bifido, you have bacterioids, you have lacto, strep, and ento. In the colon, you've got more, you've got bifido, you've got bacterium, you've got, again, I, some of these I can't even pronounce. But you've got more, let's say, and in the colon, again, in the stomach, you've got at most a thousand colonies in the duodenum, at most a thousand in the ileum and jejunum, more like a million to 10 million um, in the colon, more like a hundred million to a billion colonies. Okay, so that's a lot. Um, and so I just want to make that point that you've got a lot of these critters in you. Um, and that's just kind of the ones that are that are the good guys. Uh, that's not the pathogens yet. We'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, but there are there are let's say good bacteria and bad bacteria, um, and you know all the bad bacteria. That I'm holding up another graphic, so I've got good bacteria on one side and bad bacteria on the other. And the good bacteria on this slide, at least, are Lactococcus, Lactobacillus, uh, Strep Thermophilus, uh, Propionibacterium, and Bifidobacterium. Uh, again, you know, okay. And then there's bad guys on this uh, list, Salmonella, E. coli, Staph, uh, Clostridum, and Camp. Pylobacteria, Pyleobacteria. I wonder if that's H. pylori. Could be. Anyway, um, but there's a lot more bad bacteria than that. I've got a, you know, if anyone's interested, you know, ping me or ask in the comments of, of one of these videos, and happy to send you a list of all the bacteria that I've seen inside of people, uh, which is now about a six to eight page list of, of different kinds of bacteria. And it's really interesting how the pathogenic bacteria work, but we, and we'll talk about that kind of at the end and, and what these good guys do versus the bad guys. So uh, the next graphic I want to talk you through real quick is, is just the biome and its role in health and disease. So I've got a picture of a little gut here, and then I've got a bunch of, uh, you know, kind of cause and effect arrows that I want to talk you through. but. You know, so the, so the inputs that are negative, if you will, uh, are anything that changes pH. So if you like uh, Coke and Pepsi, you're changing your pH. Sodas uh, alter your pH in your gut biome, and that's a bad thing. Uh, that's a, will cause negative consequences with your gut biome. If you eat too much protein, so if you have excessive protein consumption, uh, that's probably me, by the way, uh, but if you eat too much protein, again, that's going to disrupt your gut biome. If you have a high input, and this is the worst one, uh, honestly, if you have a high input of processed sugar or you have a high input of fructose, that is really going to mess up everything in you. Think about this. It, you know, if we, we understand like the difference between a deer in the wild and a, and a deer in captivity, right? And, and we know that a deer in the wild, they don't get sick. They don't get sick at all, at all. I mean, they you know might get shot, they might get eaten by something, right? So they might, the rock might fall on them and you know, they might occasionally get a you know virus or something like that, right? That they burn through real quick and then they get better. Well, you bring that same deer into captivity and it'll, it'll get sick, it'll get all cancer, it'll get all kinds of stuff. Well, why? It's because of diet, right? So that deer knows what to eat out in the wild and, it, and we're trying to you know, feed it what we think is best for it you know, in captivity. So that's really the difference. Well, think about this. What if we were in the wild, humans in the wild, right? So it's, we don't have access to any of the processed stuff. Well, what would we eat? 
Well, again, we'd eventually figure it out and we'd be able to eat, you know, stuff that's growing and, you know, God's system, let's say, of, of medicine we would be eating from. But we would not be eating excessive amounts of fruit. Fruit only grows, you know, for a certain time of the year, right? Fruit's only accessible and you can't really store fruit. It goes bad, right? So you'd only be eating fruit about two or three weeks out of the year. Well, think about how much fruit we eat now, and I'm going to fructose and how bad this is, right? And fructose is in everything, everything. So it's just like we're constantly consuming fruit all the time, and that's not good for us. We're not, we're not like, even though they want you to think we are like a monkey, we're not like a monkey. We cannot do that. You're not built that way, okay? The other thing that you're built as a fat machine, so we're all built as this big fat machine, and I'll talk more about that in a second, but we're not built to just handle one kind of fat, and right now in our diet, we have a bunch of saturated fat. So that's another little input arrow in the graphic here is saturated fatty acid intake if we're eating too much saturated fat. And then the other thing that will really mess up your gut biome is antibiotics. So, that is a that is a a disruptor and again why these bacteria a lot of these bacteria that are in our gut microbiome and in our colon and in our digestive they kind of hold back pathogens all right so we all get you know if you touch your skin and go like this or ex you're get exposed to all kinds of pathogens believe me so we're all exposed to all these pathogens all the time and they get in us they definitely get in us by pathogens i mean viruses bacteria funguses parasites that are bad for you they're going to hurt you and we all get exposed to these all the time and it depends on our immune system which we talk a lot about with intermittent fasting as to you know how we can defend ourselves but it's really all about our immune system because we're going to get these guys in us and it's just whether they take hold or not so we need to understand our immune system and we need to understand our immunity and this gut biome is part of that, all right? So the gut biome will help us hold these guys back and, and basically keep them at bay and keep them neutralized, right? So you may have TB, you might have typhoid fever. I see typhoid fever to a lot of people, believe it or not. You might have typhoid fever, the bacteria that causes typhoid fever. You don't necessarily have typhoid fever. And I think it's a fungus, really. I can't remember. But anyway, you may have that guy. And, and that, but that guy may be latent. So he may be just sitting there hanging out and your gut microbiome is kind of holding him back. Well, guess what happens when you take antibiotics? You don't kill that bad guy. You kill all the good guys. Brip! they go away. And guess what that bad guy can do now? He can party. I mean, he can party on Wayne and that's what he does. Boom. He explodes. He takes off and, and now you get sicker when you've taken antibiotics. And that's what happens to a lot of people. And that's why this is so important to understand. Again, what do you do? And that chip, what do I do? I'm sick. I've got to have my antibiotics. Well, you go to nature. And again, there's so many good antibiotics in nature that are built to work with your biome, like oregano, like apple cider vinegar, okay? Apple cider vinegar, probably the most powerful antibiotic on the planet, all right? Okay, so uh, this is another pretty important one. Um, on the one side here, we have gut uh, homeostasis, which means balance, so a balanced gut. And on the other side, we have dysbiosis, uh, which is means disbalance or disruption. So let me kind of talk you through this. And again, if you're listening at home and not looking at this, you've got a nice pretty slide on one side that's, that's your balance slide. And then on the other side, it's completely <coughs> disrupted. Why? Well, what happens is you have got an antibody called IgA, okay? IgA is what helps protect your mucosal layer. There's lots of things that will mess with IgA, but if you don't have enough IgA, then you're unprotected. Your shields are down. You're gonna get things in you and you're gonna begin to get bacteria that attach and get under your mucosal layer. When that happens, they're gonna pry open your gut junctions because they wanna get in your blood and they wanna move around because that's what they do, right? So it's, if I'm a bug, I wanna set up a little fort, I wanna protect myself, and then I wanna proliferate, I wanna move around, right? And how do I move around? Blood and lymph, blood and lymph. 
So again, I wanna open up the gut junctions there and I wanna get in your blood system. And again, I wanna defeat your immune response once I get in your blood system. So that's the way that these guys work, but they can't work if you've got proper IgA. How do you have proper IgA? Again, a non-disrupted gut biome. <laughs> so if you're throwing a bunch of sugar in there, a bunch of saturated fat in there, a bunch of pop, Again, you're going to have a disrupted gut biome and you are going to suffer the consequences of that. It's just that simple. Um, okay, and again, you know, everything can be in moderation and there's lots of, you know, I'm not trying to deny anyone their, uh, you know, good stuff, right? I, I remember I was, I thermal imaged a guy, right? And this guy uh, was pretty much addicted to, I can't remember what it was, Pepsi, I think. We'll, we'll go with Pepsi, it might've been Dr. Pepper. But he just drank it all the time. He drank it, you know, he didn't drink water. He drank Pepsi or Dr. Pepper or whatever it was. And this guy was super sick and super inflamed and he wouldn't stop drinking the pop. Oh yeah, okay, it was, it was Mountain Dew. My producer says it was Mountain Dew and that's what it was. So, uh, but anyway, it's, you know, that's, if you want to really screw yourself up, drink a lot of pop. And again, I used to drink a lot of pop. Uh, you know, I'm guilty as charged. So, all right. So this is a this is a pretty complicated slide that I'm showing. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you guys through this. But this is a slide from a paper uh, by a guy named Damasio, and this is the crossover between the endocannabinoid system and uh, the gut biome. And this is why it, you know, why do uh, CBDs help with the gut? Well, this is why. You know, why do other things that touch the endocannabinoid system like turmeric and uh, like sage and like ginger, and you know, why do those things help with the gut? Well, this is why, this is because of the endocannabinoid system's role and how you're regulated and how you regulate this whole soup of a, of a gut biome. So let me tell you what happens. And this is so cool. And it's also so really godly, okay? It's just because we're a machine. Again, we're, we're a really sophisticated, uh, but also kind of simple and logical machine in the way that we work. So the way that we really work and what we're really designed to do is eat fat, all right? But it's gotta be balanced fat. It can't just be saturated fat. You have to have monounsaturated fat and you have to have polyunsaturated fats. And we do need some carbohydrates, but again, you're mainly a, a fat machine. So that's kind of the way that you run because you're optimized around fat. And what happens when we eat these fats, and there's actually nine fats, there's several different saturated fats, there's oleic acid is mono, several different O3s, um, and you know, one O2, two O6s, arachnidic acid, I guess, is uh, considered a, an O6. So anyway, but as we eat these fats, and again, they're in pretty much everything that we eat, what happens is, our body is designed to basically break everything apart and look at amino acids, carbohydrates, fats, and glucose and electrons, okay? So in your gut, you're trying to break everything apart into sort of those rough categories. But the biggest category is fat. And literally, as you eat, there are nine different types of fats that'll do this, but as you eat, and as those fats hit your intestinal lumen, you build endocannabinoids, okay? Endocannabinoids are built from the fats that we consume, not from cannabis, all right? Let's just get that out of there. Cannabis can affect the system, but endocannabinoids don't come from cannabis, they come from fat, all right? They come from fat. So as we eat these fats, again, we build these nine endocannabinoids. Those nine endocannabinoids tell our brain, our hypothalamus hippocampus, what we've just eaten, okay? They literally are saying, do I have enough polyunsaturated fat omega-3? Do I have enough polyunsaturated fat omega-6? Do I have enough monounsaturated? Do I have enough saturated fat? Do I have enough? Do I have enough? Do I have enough? And if you don't have enough, you set a deficiency state. That deficiency state is transmitted to your microbiome. What is the purpose of all of this bacteria in your microbiome? Well, it turns out bacteria poop out useful proteins. So they make basically useful proteins 
that we can't make because of fat deficiencies. And so they help offset any deficiencies that we would get by not getting all of these nine basically fats that we need in the proper ratio. But there's that much communication when you eat a meal between your endocannabinoid system and your gut biome and of trying to balance basically your gut biome around your nutritional state. So this is why the gut biome is not something that you can just go in and change because again, it changes every time you eat. Every time you eat, it gets rebalanced. And again, understanding that is super important because you can use that information to improve your health just by changing your diet. And this is why dietary changes work and why they're so important. But again, we have to be properly informed and there's so much chaos and confusion out there about this, it's unbelievable. But again, my job for you guys is to try to boil this down, make it super simple, make it super understandable and make it logical where you understand it and kind of cons consume it. So anyway, we eat these fats, these fats, and, you know, it's not, you know, hamburger, right? So hamburger has saturated fat in it. And again, that is one part of the equation, but there's eight other parts of the equation that we need, okay? So we have to balance those fats. And again, where do, you know, a lot of these things come from? Seeds, nuts, not really from meat, okay? But seeds, nuts, some carbohydrates have, you know, some saturated fat, I mean, some fats in them but carbohydrates are really more a source of vitamins, okay? So vitamins and fiber, um, some glucose, right? But again, you notice I'm not, you're, you don't run on glucose. Glucose is an important part of how you run, but you can, real quick, and again, when you read about how you work, you're gonna see all this stuff about glucose. Let me tell you, shh, let me tell you a little secret, a little thing that they won't tell you but that's super important so that you understand how important fats are, okay? Because you're gonna read all this stuff about glucose and fats, yeah, yeah, saturated fat, bad for you, bad, bad, bad. They paid people in the 50s to tell you this, to lie to you, scientists. Uh, Roger Adams is one, the guy that characterized everything about the endocannabinoid system. But anyway, so, what should you do and what should you eat? Okay, well, glucose, all right? So if you don't, if you begin to fast, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start fasting right now. Within 48 hours, you burn through all of your circulating glucose. You have a mo molecule called glucagon that you will store that could kind of be broken down into glucose-like stuff, but you'll burn through all of your circulating glucose. So you'll have no glucose. Well, you can go 40 days without eating. So, you know, what's happening? If glucose is so dang important, what's happening? And it's because your body will regenerate it and make it on its own. You don't need to consume it. Your body will make it. Your body makes it from, you know, water and, you know, simple sugars, okay? Your body will make glucose on its own. And you do have a molecule called glucagon that's stored that is sort of a, a regulator of, of glucose. So right now, again, think about how much fruit we eat. And again, we should only be eating fruit, you know, two weeks out of the year, maybe. Similarly with sugar, it, we just don't need all of this sugar that we eat in our diet. And it's so disruptive to us. Okay, so preaching off you know, to turn that off. But again, that's one of the biggest things that we do. And I, you know, do it to myself. I probably ate sugar last night. I ate some kind of chocolate chips or something, I'm sure. Um, although chocolate chips have a lot of good fat in them. But anyway, so the gut biome though is related to diet. And again, when you eat like, uh, you know, I'm gonna cheat tonight and I'm gonna eat a piece of cake. Well, when you do that, you affect your gut biome. And again, it gets disrupted, right? When you go back to eating sort of the way that you should eat, again, it'll come back into, into line and kind of back into normal. So that is it on the gut biome. Uh, if you guys have got questions, feel free to hit us up at Chip Talks or in the comments or anything like that. If you got ideas for what you wanna hear about in the future, happy to do this. We can, we can do more of a deep dive on the gut biome. Always happy to do this. There's way more here. Oh my gosh, is there way more here? But you know, when we get into actually talking about digestive fluids and how they're regulated and all that, but it all comes back to the endocannabinoid system, which is kind of cool. Anyway, see you guys. Love you guys. We'll see you next week.
uh, on another exciting version of Chip Talks. Bye.